most young guys enjoy erections growing up, enjoy playing with themselves, masturbating. That's something I could never partake in. Hi, my name is uh, Dr. Erwin Goldstein. I'm director of sexual medicine at Alvarado Hospital in San Diego, California. I was asked um, in the uh, context of caring for uh, a patient, uh, a Dylan, uh, who presented to us with erectile dysfunction by uh, producers at the Learning Channel to do a documentary on uh, Dylan's uh, story. Dylan is a young man who had erectile dysfunction essentially all his life um, and uh, had seen multiple healthcare providers and uh, uh, was um, still having erectile dysfunction. Upon arrival uh, at San Diego Sexual Medicine, Dylan underwent a series of tests which revealed that he had a blocked artery to his penis, likely as a result of uh, a biking accident he had as a younger man. Dylan underwent a microvascular arterial bypass surgery called penile revascularization, which restored his erectile function. After the Learning Channel played uh, this documentary, uh, we received numerous phone calls from individuals who had similar stories. Uh, I decided to upload uh, the TLC segment on this uh, penile revascularization surgery to provide additional information to individuals who may be suffering from similar erectile dysfunction. My name is Dylan. I'm 22 years old, and I'm a student at Colorado State. I don't know if I could actually put a point on exactly when I started noticing differences between myself and other guys. I think it was when I was, you know, starting to get older, and especially when I started to become more involved with girls, which kind of exposed the problem. I couldn't get an erection, I didn't know why. When Dylan was born, he was one of those wonderfully perfect little boys. He was very healthy and very energetic, very active. He loved his bicycle, he was on his bicycle 24-7. I would say that my childhood was relatively normal. When I was little, I didn't have any specific health problems. I have distinct memories of being able to attain erections without, without a problem. As I grew a little bit older, I started to notice that they slowly died away. It was when I started having consistent girlfriends where th these problems kind of started popping up over and over. I just couldn't get hard. When my girlfriend would start playing with me, just nothing happened. I was getting just no physical response. My penis wasn't erect at all, which is relatively useless. <laughs> the only thing I could think of was that maybe I wasn't masturbating, and I had never really done that. So I went from never masturbating to trying to masturbate a couple times a week. If I was completely alone and worked at it for about 45 minutes, I could come to orgasm. Nothing spectacular. I wouldn't be hard when I did. And it was very frustrating. A typical male, age 18, uh, with sexual arousal will get a rigid, rock-hard erection within seconds of sexual arousal. I was very embarrassed. I never told anyone. Having a sexual health problem as an adult is tough enough. It's uh, embarrassing and humiliating, but having a sexual health problem at age 18, at the beginning of your sexual life, is ridiculous. I can't think of anything worse. When I'd be watching like a Viagra commercial or something of the like, it, it was, there was just this huge feeling, this huge sinking feeling of, this should not be happening this young. Something is wrong. I wasn't 
sure how my dad would react. Brought it up, said I think that there's a problem and I need to address it. He couldn't have seen that coming any more than any other parent. Having your son walk up to you and say, by the way, I'm 18 and can't get directions, isn't exactly something a father is expecting. Dylan just told me, he said, I think I have an issue. You know, I know that I couldn't have talked to my dad about having erectile dys dysfunction. I can't imagine how you got up the, the courage to come talk to me. Dylan and I started then in 2007 what became the summer of going to the doctors. My experience with my first urologist was actually upsetting. We didn't believe a word I said. He told me that he would run some blood tests, that it was probably anxiety, don't worry about it, it'll go away. We saw eventually four urologists and an endocrinologist. All of these doctors just kept looking at us and saying, there's nothing wrong with your son. His hormone levels are fine. He doesn't have a tumor on his pituitary gland. There's nothing I can do to help you. We were thinking, maybe, you know, maybe we won't get this fixed. Dylan presented with an unusual complaint of erection problems, and after interviewing him and realizing that there really did appear to be something wrong, uh, we explained that we're going to go on to assess the integrity of his nerves to the penis, blood flow to the penis, and we're going to x-ray the penis to look at its anatomic integrity. And we need to really understand what it is that's wrong so we can better understand how to make it normal. The testing was bizarre. The testing involved having three or four inch needles inserted into your penis. They force uh, an erection with a muscle relaxer. And the purpose of that is to test whether or not you can hold pressure inside your penis, if that's the problem, or if you have a blood flow problem to your penis. This is the arteriogram that was performed on Dylan. And you could see the erect penis in the camera, and you could see the needle in the penis, and you could see the blood flow coming into the erection chamber. On this picture over here, this artery is supposed to go all the way to the end, but is blocked right over here. At that point, Dr. Goldstein felt very confident that he knew what was wrong. Dylan's problem was due to a blocked artery in the erection tissue. We actually bring the penis into the scrotum, so we sort of turn it inside out so we can operate on the penis. I was extremely nervous. I don't like needles. It was frankly just terrifying. When I masturbated for the first time, I literally got brought down to my knees. My sexual life in high school was kind of just a blur. It was just constant embarrassment and hiding and secrecy. Most young guys enjoy erections growing up, enjoy playing with themselves, masturbating. That's something I could never partake in. As a parent, you're going through this, well, if he had a broken arm, you'd fix his broken arm. Well, he has a broken penis. So why will you not help me fix that? So this is a uh, human pelvis. Here are the arteries that go to the pelvis. And you can see that the artery passes directly on the bone that connects the sit bone to the pubic bone. So any crush injury will crush this artery against the bone. And this is exactly what happened to Dylan. There are a lot of ways blunt perineal trauma can clobber and put a crimp in the artery to the erection chamber. From surfing injuries, from fights, from martial arts experiments, there's a lot of ways this can happen. Dylan gave me a history of having ridden bicycles where he did flips and twists and landed on his crotch. I probably have about 500 memories of coming down very, very hard on my bike seat. The 
The surgery is called microvascular arterial bypass surgery. We take an artery from the rectus muscle, which is the stomach muscle, retransfer it down into the base of the penis and make a microvascular connection to the artery of the penis and it will bring new blood flow to the penis. When I first woke up from the surgery, I was just glad it was over with, I was glad I wasn't dead. I think we could summarize Dylan's recovery as fairly standard. When I masturbated for the first time, I was still like not fully, fully erect, but a lot harder than I'd ever been before. But when I actually did come to orgasm, I literally got brought down to my knees. The first time I actually had an orgasm from sex after the surgery, it was kind of awkward. I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I didn't really know what I was doing. This was really like the first time that I'd actually had an erect penis during sex. This was essentially the first time I had sex. It was a learning experience. But afterwards, it was like final confirmation that I'm probably gonna be okay. Alexa and I have currently been dating about 16 months, and we live together here in Fort Collins. It's been two and a half years since the surgery. I've been completely symptom-free the entire time. When Dylan first told me about his erectile dysfunction, I was taken off guard um, because there was absolutely no indication in our sex life that there had ever been a problem. He was very confident in bed. He at least to me, it always knew exactly what he was doing. I would probably say that I value sex more following this experience. It's something that's very important to me, very close to me, very dear to me. It's something I worked for. In summary, uh, uh, this is a TLC production concerning a patient of mine, Dylan, who had erectile dysfunction as a young man and was diagnosed as having a blocked artery to his penis. His treatment involved uh, an anastomosis of an artery from his stomach that was connected to the artery of his penis and resulted in him re-recovering his erectile function.